um, and available on the Friday <clears throat> link. Um, I'll get that out there later today. So where I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the spending plan. Um, and you know, some of you may not um, know that much about the spending plan because maybe a lot of your districts. Um, don't use um, the SM1 um, information that they had in Classic. So um, this might be a refresher course for some of you and others. This might be something new. Um, so what we've done is underneath periodic, we added a spending plan option. And this is basically the replacement for the SM1 main in the Classic program. So in Classic, you had the SM1-2 program which contained both the SM1 maint, the SM2 maint, um, the calculate option, which we don't have to worry about anymore in the redesign, and also all the different reports. They were all underneath that SM1 to umbrella. Um, so what we're gonna do is show you um, where those reports are in um, the redesign and how they can set up their estimates in the spending plan option. This is pretty straightforward. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, you're just basically entering information. It kind of reminds me a little bit of just, you know, a basic entry program like Cash Rec. Um, so um, what I've done is I've gone out here in my test account and already added some line items um, so that you can see um, what they look like on the grid after those line items are added. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on Create what happens, it brings up a pop-up box here. And what I do like about this um, a lot is we did add the ability to do the create new um, so that, you know, when they are entering their estimates, um, they're gonna be entering in several forecast line items. So instead of having to X out, go back in and create the next forecast line item, you can just check mark the create new once you add that line item, the window stays open and you can add the next estimates for the next line item. So obviously the fiscal year, so I'm in fiscal year uh, 2020, so I'm in September of fiscal year 2020. Um, my line number, so I can click on the drop down here and it's going to give me all the avail available line numbers that I can choose. So obviously it's not going to contain any of those calculated fields, just the ones where you're going to be putting in your estimates. Um, so you would select one of these, and then from there you're going to go in and start entering in your information. So the, these are where your estimates are going to go. So obviously for a district, they've got um, uh, information, documents and stuff that have those estimates, calculations on there. They might be basing it off of um, the prior year's SM2 information to make their estimates for the new fiscal year. Um, they may have spreadsheets or something set up and they can plug that information into these um, months for the new year. Um, one thing I wanted to make note of, and we did make note of it in the documentation as well, is if the district does have amounts in their SM1 and Classic, they will not get imported into the redesign. So the SWOT extract does not pull that information. So the district um, will need to enter those figures in after import. Um, we went ahead and added this as a step in the post-import procedures. So I just wanted um, you all to be aware of that, that those will not get imported in. They will have to enter in their SM1 um, estimates if they have them in Classic. Now, like I said before, I don't know how many of your districts entered their estimates in Classic, but um, just looking at how this tool is used, it is, it's nice. I mean, it gives them an easy way um, you look at their five-year forecast spending. Um, it's a really quick and easy way to track if you're over or under uh, what you spent um, against what you estimated um, by five-year forecast line number. So like I said, they're going in here, they're entering in this information, and then they click on save, and that will pull 
dis or display that line number in here. So I'm just going to open up this first one that I did just so you can see what it looks like. And so um, 2020 was my default year. I selected the line number and then I went in and started entering my estimates for the year. And when you do that, this fiscal year estimate field is automatically calculated. You can't modify that field. So it's, it's based off what you've entered in your estimate uh, boxes here. And that's really all there is to adding your estimates um, to the uh, spending plan. Um, there's not a whole lot when it comes to um, the more option in here. I think we've got almost everything. Um, that you really would need to see on the grid, your fiscal year, your line number, um, the description, and your estimated amounts. So just a little bit of um, history um, with the SM1. Uh, so, and this, believe it or not, is even before my time, um, is that it used to be um, required uh, to be submitted um, and filed with, I believe, ODE and I think the area coordinator's office. So that was way back when they were, they were required to do this. And I'm not quite sure anymore, but I believe that districts that are in fiscal watch or fiscal emergency, they may need to submit um, and create an SM1 and, and submit their SM1 um, data um, to ODE. So what happened is, you know, you know, hist history, um, a lot of districts, you know, were using that because they required to do the SM1 and SM2, and then they just, after it wasn't required to submit it anymore, they continued using it, and I believe it's a popular report um, that districts give to their boards. I know that when I was working with Nawaka, it was one that, when I would create, like, FISC web pages and stuff like that, um, they would want the SM, SM2 report, or when they were trying to get their board packets ready, they always wanted to include the SM2 uh, reports. So it is a pretty popular um, report that they want to use because it is. It's Especially if they're using the SM1, you know, take advantage of that because then they can see what they've estimated versus what's actual. And they can compare that at any time and see if they're over or under spending. So like I said, the SM, uh, the spending plan is for estimates only. Your actual amounts are going to be calculated on the fly, and you're going to enter each amount for each month on the five-year forecast for the year that you're in. Um, the, you can edit these spending plan figures um, during the current year. Um, I don't believe you'll be able to delete spending plan figures for the year that has been closed. So once the year has been closed, you can't go back and make changes to that. So any cal calculated lines from the forecast, obviously you won't be able to choose from from the drop down, as I said before. So these are including your subtotal lines and your total lines. Obviously those are going to be calculated uh, for you. So like the total revenue line, 1.070, your 2.070, which is your other financing resources, so on and so forth. Those are just going to get calculated. <clears throat> okay, any questions about just the spending plan entry at all? Pretty straightforward. I don't see anything in chat either. Well, like I said, with the SM1 information here that you enter in the spending plan, your SM2 figures are calculated on the fly, and we do have spending plan reports out there. So I'm going to go to the report manager, and we'll take a look at those. And there's three of them, and they're basically uh, um, a replacement for the reports that are um, in Classic. So we'll talk about these three. We have a spending plan comparison, a spending plan monthly, and a spending plan summary. So the spending plan comparison, this first one, is uh, the replacement for the SM2 comparison report that was out in Classic's SM12 program. It was called SM2 CMP. Um, and so if I run this report, go ahead and execute it, 
like I said, these are all template reports. Um, and I do have to enter in the fiscal year. So I'm going to put in fiscal year 2020, and I'm just going to leave the format as a PDF. It's fine. And so what this report is going to generate, it's going to, if, you're, if you recall the one in Classic, it's going to have a line for the estimate, one for the actual, and then a comparison line. So in here, um, so for forecast line number 1.010, it's showing me my estimate, my actual, and it did bump it down, just a, a little space issue there. My actual, which I didn't have anything um, entered yet, and then the difference. Um, my test files are in September, um, but I probably don't have really a whole lot of information um, from July and August in there yet. I might have just changed the current period here. So um, you may not see a whole lot of um, actual amounts on these reports. Um, but you'll see, like I said, it has a line for each one. So it's breaking it down by month for this fiscal year. And so here are my estimates. So this figure obviously is what I entered in uh, the spending plan and then my actuals, which I don't have any, and then my difference, which would be the difference between estimates versus actuals. So it's very similar to what you saw in um, the SM2 uh, comp program in Classic. So it goes down and displays them all through line 8.018, or I'm sorry, 8.010. And again, um, this can be pulled in any format. I just thought the uh, PDF file was the, um, probably the most simple one to look at. So I'm going to go back. And I'm going to show you the spending plan monthly. So again, not a whole lot to it. It just basically is prompting you for the year. And this is going to print each month's actual amount. So you're not going to see the um, estimates on this report. So this is the replacement for the SM2 MON um, option underneath SM12 in Classic. So a pretty clean report here. So for line, I'll pick one that has a few figures here, like line 1.035. These are my actuals, so I must have had some data out there in this test file for, um, it shows you the fiscal year to date actual, and then, so this would be the total for the entire year, this one right here, and then each month's actual figures. So no estimates on this one. So the same way that the SM2 MON behaved in Classic. And the last one I'm gonna show you is the spending plan summary. So this is the replacement for the SM2M. So when, in Classic, when they wanted to calculate their SM2 figures, which we don't have to, the actual figures, which we don't have to do anymore here in the redesign, um, they would run um, the SM2 calc option. That generated the SM2M report. That's what this is, it's a replacement. Um, and then we also had a separate SM2M report option in Classic as well. Um, and so it's going to, again, and it has it stated there, it's required to put in the year and then the beginning and ending month. So if I chose the entire year here, um, then it's going to show me, um, it's going to calculate a total amount for that time period. If I just want to put in from July to July, then I can put that in here. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this. So like I said, it's going to list um, the current period figures. Let me pull it up here. So um, the monthly, and it's also going to include the estimates and the actual. So because I chose just the month of July, my monthly actual is going to include just the month of July as well as my monthly estimate. Now, if my um, period range was from July through um, September, 
then I'm going to see that total amount of those months in those fields. So I've got my actual versus my estimate, and if there's any difference, it'll show it here on the monthly difference, and it also includes my uh, fiscal year to date amounts as well. So automatically I get the fiscal year to date estimate versus the actual and the difference there. <clears throat> so it's a nice clean report, pulls up all the forecast line numbers on here. So those are the um, three reports that we have provided. Um, obviously custom reports can be done as well. Um, using the custom report writer there, but um, these are the three that um, we try to uh, replicate, replicate from the SM12 Classic reports. Any questions about these SM2 reports? I know we had a couple tickets um, from people regarding seeing a breakdown of each month by account code. We used to have um, an option in the old classic program. Let's see if I can bring that up. I'm going to give you an example so you can see what I'm talking about. And I think it was under our annual option. We had the old SM1 underscore SM2 reporting, and one that I've um, found that's been pretty popular here is, and we just, don't ask me why, we just have it for revenue, and we don't have it for uh, um, expenditures, but I'm going to generate this. And what it shows is it shows a breakdown by forecast line number each month. So here are my months up here. And then the account codes that are tied to those figures. And so we've had requests um, from, um, I know we've had a couple tickets, and we created a feedback issue, USSR SB-114, um, that's going to um, provide the account codes that are tied to those amounts for each month, very similar to what you're seeing here in this SM2 uh, HIST Rev report. That way districts can also see the accounts um, that are associated with that and the breakdown of what makes up those amounts for each forecast line number for each month. So I just wanted to uh, let you guys know about that, that that is one thing that um, we've had requested. Okay, any other questions about the spending plan? It's about all I was planning on covering for the spending plan portion. All right, what I'm going to get into now um, is the forecast, and there's not a whole lot with the forecast in the redesign, so I wanted to take you through um, how to create a forecast and our forecast report that we have out there. And then I was going to talk about um, the data collector a little bit, EMIS FFE, and just going through the steps of the forecast. I know things have changed a little bit in the last year. They're getting more errors in the data collector because they have missing forecast numbers or the amounts aren't there and things like that. So I wanted to um, go through um, where these figures are coming from, um, some tips and helpful hints that ODE has provided. They have updated their website, too, to include some more helpful information for treasures uh, regarding the five-year forecast. So I wanted to take you to that link in case you guys weren't aware of that, um, and then just talk about um, how um, it gets submitted in the, for, in the data collector and how you can look up that information that was submitted through the data collector and through um, a five-year forecast link that's out there as well on ODE's website. So I kind of want to go through all of that with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my main screen here. And um, the forecast 
is again underneath periodic, just like the spending plan was. So I'm going to click on that. And really, there's not a whole lot with this forecast option, which is really nice. In Classic, you had USAS-FS, basically the replacement for USAS-FS. And when you ran USAS-FS in Classic, it generated a report and a CSV file. Um, so the CSV file portion is this grid right here. So because what you can do is it's going to automatically bring up <coughs> all the um, forecast line numbers, and you'll notice that you'll see several um, where it, because you have more than one account that's tied to that forecast line number, you're going to see a lot of, you know, the line numbers with the associated uh, account code that makes up that portion of that forecast line number. Um, so in here, <clears throat> I it would be nice. I think I'm going to... Um, I don't know if we have a request, enhancement request for this, or if it's even possible to be able to put some kind of filter grid up here so that maybe if I just want to look at the 1.050s, I can. Um, so I'm going to look into that. Um, but in here, you'll see it's got everything that you're used to seeing, the line number, the description, your account codes that are tied to that line number, the prior three years, your percentage of average change, and then the current year. Now, one thing I want to point out, and because I noticed this on tickets last year, is that people were assuming that the current year was received and expended amounts. It isn't. It's receivable and expendable figures. Now, the prior year information is your received and expended but these are, the current year are your estimates. They aren't your actuals. So we did have a few questions and we did also document that so that people are aware that that's what that figure is. So it is a forecast period, so the current year. So that's why it's your estimates and not your actuals. And so with the forecast, you've got a CSV option and you have an Excel option. So the CSV is going to do just that. It's, you click on Generate, it's going to create a CSV file of everything that's on this grid. So that way they can take that file, they can go in and make changes if they need to, and then they can go in and um, import that file into EMIS FFE. So with that, there's also um, an Excel option, and I get excited about the Excel option because what it does is it pulls it and throws it into SSDT's forecast. We've had that forecast software out there forever, um, and so this directly links it to that. So when I click on Excel and generate, it brings up and it saves it, and then when I pull up that Excel spreadsheet, I'll show you what I'm seeing here. This is where it's going to basically take me. And once I open up that spreadsheet, you'll notice it throws me right into state software's, state software's five-year forecast. So where it takes me right away <clears throat> when I first open it up is into the parameters. <clears throat> so if those of you that are familiar with state software's five-year forecast spreadsheet, you'll notice all the different tabs at the bottom. So we do have an instructions and then we have other tabs, and I'm just going to talk about a few of these here. Um, this first one, the parameters, notice that it already pulled in the district and my fiscal year. So this came from the organization screen and redesign. So it already has that stuff in here. And then if I go over to the data tab, it's going to take all the information from this grid and pull it into here. So um, this is great because everything's already filled in. Um, and then I can then go over to my forecast tab. That's where I'm going to be working. Um, and that's where I'm going to be putting in my forecasted amounts. So I'm going to scroll up to the top here so you can see the very top of it. So again, it took the stuff from data and displays it in my forecast spreadsheet. And then from here, I can go in and enter in my forecasted amounts for the remaining years. 
And this is the forecast I am going to save and then pull into EMIS FFE. So it's kind of doing all the work for me already, which is really nice. Okay, any questions about the Excel option? So like I said, CSV, got a standard spreadsheet, Excel, it pulls it into state software's, state software's five-year forecast. Um, there's also a report, so I'm going to go down to the report manager again. And it's called uh, Financial Report by Five Year Forecast line number, this one right here. So I'm going to click on, so this is, so this report here is the replacement for the USAS FF text file report that was generated. So if I go ahead and just generate that, basically you'll be seeing a lot of the same things that you see in um, the grid. So when we were looking at the grid there um, underneath the forecast. <clears throat> so once that generates, there you go. I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so it does look very similar to what you saw in Classic. So it's got the account code, again, um, the prior years, um, the average percentage change, and the current year. So if they want to see basically the forecast grid in a report, they are going to run this report. Any questions about that? Um, just a couple things I want to mention regarding um, some enhancements and something that we um, are currently looking into. For one, if I go back to the forecast grid, One thing that we have been made aware of is when the, um, when the grid is um, pulling the information in, it's sorting it by five-year five forecast line number, which is correct. However, from there, um, since, you know, there are quite a few lines or account codes that are tied to each five-year forecast line number, the account codes are not being sorted, sorted then in order. Um, so we do have... Uh, uh, request here. It's USAS R F B. Uh, I think it's 328 um, that will allow us to reorder the grid here. So it goes by five-year forecast line number, and then within that, by account code dimension. So right now, the account codes are kind of all over the place. So that is something that. Uh, we plan on changing, but we do have a feedback request for that. Um, one other thing, too, and I don't have this line number in my um, grid here because it's, it's not being used uh, by this district. Um, it's probably one that isn't used a whole lot, but we wanted you to be made aware of um, because we had a, have had a couple of tickets. It's line 4.010. Um, we are in the process of um, we are going back and forth with ODE right now regarding this line number. Um, <clears throat> if you look at it through um, the uh, five-year forecast um, EMIS manual, um, it shows that line 4.010 says all principal historical amounts, um, but there is um, some totals that are not calculating uh, correctly or it's, it's actually duplicating the value. Um, so if you have a district that um, has amounts under the 4.010 line numbers, um, and uh, they have some questions about it, if it's not calculating it correctly for them. Uh, we do have, like I said, we've got a feedback or a, a issue already out there, and we're waiting word 
from ODE regarding um, some of the amounts in there, and we're going to get that corrected as soon as we can. So if, you know, your districts are questioning that line number, we are currently looking into it, and we'll get something out there as soon as we get word from ODE. Okay, I've got a question here. When I tried the Excel version, I got a virus and threat protection. Oh, I don't know why you would be <laughs> getting that. Um, I ran the Excel version a few times the last few days. I don't know if it's something with, um, I, don't, I don't know. I think you're going to have to talk to your, um, your hardware or your tech person there, um, Deb. I'm not quite sure why you're getting that. So I would talk to them as soon as possible. I'm not aware of any, any type of virus or threat protections with these spreadsheets. So it might just be something that's tied to um, your machine. I'm not quite sure. Any other questions? That's it with the forecast. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, getting the information out of the redesign. Like I said, what I wanted to do is go a little further, and I know that a couple of ITCs have just said, you know, we got new people in here. It'd be nice just to hear a little, you know, just review of the forecast procedures, and I'm fine with that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with them, so we can go through some of that information. Um, like I said, there have been some changes to the forecast. Um, they've kind of put a little bit more of a lockdown on missing forecast line numbers and things. So when it goes to the data collector, they could get possible errors. <coughs> um, one of them, um, they could get some level one uh, warning errors regarding, um, I know that they had removed an error regarding rounding and they've replaced that, that warning with a, an actual fatal message. If the, if the rounding is outside of an acceptable threshold. Now, they used to say 50 cents. I don't know what an acceptable threshold is, but um, it will produce a fatal error in the data collector if it's outside of that. Also, they're going to throw fatals with any missing rows. So that will cause the collection to not be submittable to ODE. And so what I've told our districts is to compare your forecast line numbers with um, the EMIS manual. So we gave them a link in our checklist to go right in there and pull up that information. And I think I've got that out here somewhere. So when I go to uh, section 7.2 of the EMIS manual, it lists every line number. And so they should be going in and comparing this with their spreadsheets and making sure that everything's there and there aren't any missing ones. So that's one thing um, that we do have them uh, make sure that it's all there. So we do remind them of that. Also, their notes. They made a change, I think last fall already, might have even been before that in the spring period, where notes are not to be uploaded into EMIS FFE. They are loaded when you're ready to certify and submit <clears throat> your forecast in the data collector. So there's a spot there where you can upload your notes. So the notes um, must be in a text.txt or PDF format. I believe those are the only two formats that they're going to accept in the data collector. So one other thing before we even go into EMIS FFE here, because that's the next place I'd like to go, is I, went, I told you that there's a helpful links for treasures out there on ODE's website. So this is where that's at. Um, and you can just type in on ODE's website, helpful links for treasures, five-year forecast, and it takes you right to this. So it does provide the forecast templates from state software, as well as a forecast template from the Otter State's office. Um, it provides Section 7.2 of the EMIS manual, some submission error resolution instructions, which is helpful, and directions on how to submit your notes and assumptions. 
So all of that's kind of there. It makes it nice. So um, if they do want further information or they just want to get a bit more comfortable if the treasures are new to the forecast um, period, um, this is um, some helpful information for them. So when the district's done with the forecast, and maybe, you know, your districts are not even using state software's five-year forecast. They have their own forecast that they use, um, and that's, they just make changes to that. Um, however they get the forecast information, it needs to be in a CSV format for sure. So before they upload it into EMIS SFE. It has to go through EMIS SFE before they can upload it into the data collector because EMIS SFE is going to format it um, so that the data collector can read it correctly. So I'm going to go into, get rid of some of these spending plans here, free up some of my tabs. Um, I'm going to go into EMIS FFE just to show you what it looks like when you first access it. So I'm sure all of you have a link out there on your website as well for your IT, for your districts um, to access EMIS FFE. So obviously this is the login page. So they're going to go in and enter in their username and password for EMIS FFE. And what I've done is I've pulled up Nawaka's checklist just so you can see um, uh, what um, they're going to do. We kind of give them and take them through steps on how to um, upload their data into EMIS FFE. So one thing, the EMIS FFE format is very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. And so last spring when they did their required um, forecast submission, it left that information out there. So that's still sitting out there in EMIS FFE. So they need to get rid of that before they do their fall one here. So they need to make sure they go out there and delete any records currently in um, the QF record. So when they log in to EMIS FFE, they're going to have all the different uh, periods and all the different records and there's going to be a QF record for five-year forecast. They're going to go out there and delete all that to basically clear everything out so they can import their new spreadsheet. So once they delete those, then they can go in and import the five-year forecast spreadsheet in there. And they're going to use the five-year forecast spreadsheet import. So that's one thing that they definitely need to be aware of, that they're not using import data. They're using this one specifically designed for the five-year forecast. <clears throat> and from there, it's going to then ask them, where do you want to start on this spreadsheet that you're uploading in? So that spreadsheet, like I said, has to be a CSV format. And then where do you want it to begin? So what they're doing is they should be looking at where the first forecast line number, what row does the first forecast line number start on. If they've got a bunch of header information at the top of the spreadsheet with the district name and all of that, they want to skip all of that and they want to go right to where forecast line number 1.010 begins. So if it begins on line, I'm sorry, on row or line 12 of their spreadsheet, they want to make sure that their number of header rows shows 11. So basically it's saying skip 1 through 11 and start reading my spreadsheet from line 12. And then from there, these are all by default showing what columns each of the forecast um, information is stored on. So with the line numbers in column A, the description is probably in column B, my three-year prior actual amount is in column C. So they just want to make sure that these line up with what's on their spreadsheet. If they have um, spaces like columns uh, in between each forecast line number that doesn't contain any information, they may need to change these um, to show that really after, if I have um, a blank column in between my three and two, I have to go in and change that and adjust my columns to say, really, um, the second uh, year prior is actually in column E instead of D. 
So they have to make sure that they that this matches their actual spreadsheet. And then they're actually going to go in and click on Browse to import that CSV file that they saved. So once that's done, then they can go in back to the QF and review those numbers and make sure that everything looks good. So one thing they definitely want to be uh, careful of is when this spreadsheet is getting imported to make sure that there aren't any errors that are coming up too. You guys may have seen different errors where it didn't load specific um, line numbers and there could be a reason why. I know somebody put in 11.003 instead of 11.300 and that line number did not get loaded in here and it gave them a message because it wasn't included. So um, you, they don't want to ignore any error messages on the import. If they have questions about it, they need to be contacting you guys and you guys need to help them with what um, is, is causing the issue. So it could be some kind of formula or something that they have on whatever spreadsheet, third-party spreadsheet they're using that could be causing an issue. So they should not see any errors when they import the spreadsheet. It should say something like import, imported successfully. If they do get any type of errors, they need to look into that before they go any further. So once they get a clean import, then, and they review their data, so what I've told our districts is take a look at your QF record and EMAS FFE, and if that matches your, and then have spreadsheet pulled up, everything, the figures look good. Um, they can look at maybe the total, like line 15.010, and make sure everything matches, then they know that it's good and they can actually start to export that forecast out. So <clears throat> there's an export option in the main menu of EMAS FFE and they're going to select the fiscal year and then the data set. This usually gets people, the fiscal year. Um, I believe it is set up now that it's going to default to 2020. Um, I know in years past, sometimes it still defaulted to the prior year, and it had 2019, and they didn't recognize that. They selected peer, uh, period P for the five-year forecast, and then went to try and um, do a collection, the data collector, and it totally rejected it. That's because the year was incorrect here. So they do want to make sure that their fiscal year shows 2020, and then they're going to go in and select the QF record. So. The data set is the P period. Records to export, they're going to check mark the QF, which has to do with the five year forecast. And it's going to generate an export file. And usually it pulls the district's IRN, and, and it's the IRN number underscore FFE.seq. It's going to be in a proper sequential file format for it to get uploaded into EMIS R. So once they got that sequential file, they're going to go into the data collector and they're going to upload that. So they're going to go into the other data sources tab and underneath um, the data source for the forecast folder, so you're talking about the flat file, they're going to go in and if they've got one out there from last reporting period, they want to delete that out and they want to put in their new forecast sequential file. So they're going to upload that into that forecast folder and then they're going to go back to the collection request tab and they're going to start a collection and they're going to go through and do the collection and prepare the data, preview the data. And when they're previewing the data, again, it's so important for them to, again, take a look, compare maybe the totals, maybe line 15.010, compare that to um, their spreadsheet, they still have that pulled up in Excel and make sure that those amounts match. And so at that point, if everything looks good, this is where they're going to go down. <clears throat> and when they get to the point where they're going to certify and submit, here's where they're going to attach their forecast numbers. Um, I'm sorry, their forecast notes. So they're going to go in and select browse and pull it, um, their forecast notes in, either if it's in a text or a PDF format, 
and upload that in. And there's a required file status that will say that the file was uploaded and it will show the name of the file underneath it. So once they've got that in there, <clears throat> they're good to go and they can go ahead and certify and submit their forecast. So at that point, just one other thing I wanted to point out to you guys is where they can go in to view that data. There is um, an archive tab in the uh, data collector where they can go in and select the appropriate, appropriate period. So they want period P. And then from there, the archive type is submissions only. And when they click on list archives, <clears throat> it's gonna create a zip folder containing what data was submitted for the forecast ODE. So when they click on that zip tab, um, or that zip file, it's going to um, and open it. Um, this is from what happened last year, so I don't aware of any changes this year, um, but they should see these specific files, the assumptions, and the actual forecast data, that would be the QF forecast record, so if they go and view that, it's already in a spreadsheet format. It should match what they saw when, before they submitted it, when they previewed the data. And then an actual submitted file, which is gonna include a total number of the forecast line numbers included in the submission. So it's just more of a FYI type of file. So the assumptions in this actual QF forecast record is gonna contain the notes and the forecast data. So they verify that, they know then that that is, they can confirm then that that's what I submitted to ODE. And then there is a, it's right here. I've got it somewhere here. And then there is um, a site out there um, of your forecast information. So once you submit that to ODE, it's gonna take a couple days, but you can then go in and look on this public uh, link here and go in and confirm that your forecast data is out there on this five-year forecast <clears throat> website. So you can go down to by district name or by county and put in whatever the district name is. And then you can go in then and generate this forecast and confirm once more that the amounts are the same amounts that you're, you have seen um, in the data collector when you looked at the stuff in EMIS FFE in your original spreadsheet. So just to make sure that everything's there. Probably a little more thorough than what, what you guys all needed, but you're gonna get questions from your districts about this. And they'll say, okay, what do I do after it's submitted? How do I know? that it was submitted, okay, look in your archives tab in the data collector to get that. Well, where can I go now to look, you know, where is this located? It's in this five-year forecast link. And there's also a link for the notes. And so here's the link for the notes as well. And so it's gonna show, you know, ones from prior years. And here's the one uh, for 2020 here. Um, I don't even know if they've got that. It looks like they just created it not too long ago. Um, so you can go in, oh, we'll go to the 2019 one here. And it's got um, forecast notes in here as well. Okay. Any questions? About the forecast procedures. I'm assuming most of you have some type of checklist that you share with your districts um, on how to complete the forecast um, procedures by uploading it into FFE and then into the data collector. If not, you know, uh, Nawakas is out there. If you want to use that as a guide, feel free. It just kind of goes through, you know, it's, you know, specific to Nawaka, but you can get the basics, you know, of the steps that need to be done. Um, any other questions? Okay, I hope this was helpful for everybody just to get a refresher on the forecast and 
how the, you can get the forecast and spending plan information um, in the redesign. Um, everyone, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Like I said, we will get this re uh, recording out there underneath the Friday webinars. If I go to that link, the next one that we're going to cover is next week, and it's Mass Change Definitions and Payroll. So we'll be covering that next Friday. Everyone have a good weekend, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.